Last year, we had a lot of people sign up for the Adopt an Ephemeral Wetland program, but most of the wetlands stayed dry throughout the year. Compare that to this year, where almost all the wetlands out here are saturated, they're flooded. In fact, we've seen wetlands that have water in them that haven't held water for five or 10 years. It's never the same pond twice. For instance, a lot has changed in this wetland between November, when it was kind of empty, and January. And that's at the root of what's so interesting about the animals in the pond. Citizen science is alive and well in the Munson Sandhills. Here, families are adding to our knowledge of amphibian life and ephemeral wetlands. Now pull it back toward you. All right, got anything? After we got the Disney Conservation Fund grant, we were able to incorporate an educational component to our scientific research out here in the Apalachicola National Forest. And the primary research and education project that we do is the Adopt an Ephemeral Wetland Program, where we engage the public to monitor the ephemeral wetlands for amphibian communities. You've got the deep tail fin, you got the speckling on the tail, after people attend the training, they then are responsible for dip netting their wetland on their own at least twice a year, once to catch the winter breeding amphibians and once to catch the spring and summer breeding amphibians. The fullness of an ephemeral wetland is tied to the fullness of the aquifer beneath it. So if we don't see rain for a couple of months, the water level goes down in the pond, or it gets dry altogether. When it rains enough to fill the aquifer beneath it, the wetland will hold water. From a citizen standpoint, they're really a unique and exciting opportunity to see seasonal changes occur right here in our backyard. They will come to the wetland and they'll get a chance to see lots of different species throughout the year of amphibians as well as our invertebrates and there's flowers blooming different times of year. We have flowers blooming in December and those are a whole different suite of flowers than if you go down to your wetland in the summertime. During the March tip netting day, we see damselflies and dragonflies in various stages. This is what happened when Rebecca put a dragonfly larva with a damselfly larva. They're yeah, bad dragonfly, bad dragonfly. I know, they're just ferocious. Families and individuals can adopt wetlands as well as larger groups. Right here. One such group that we have had adopt a wetland is from the Palmer Monroe Teen Center. Some months we would dip net the wetland to see what species were breeding during that particular season. And sometimes we would just hike around their wetland so that they could get an idea of what the uplands around the wetlands look like because the uplands are equally as important as the wetlands to these ephemeral wetland breeding amphibians. This is one of the things with citizen science projects is that you have to meet your objectives for data gathering, but you also have to make sure that it is easy and fun for people to do. And that's at the heart of the Eco Citizen Project. It's about the enjoyment of connecting with nature, whether you're chasing butterflies in the forest, using iNaturalist to ID a flower in your yard, planting wildflowers in your yard, or splashing around in an ephemeral wetland. Funding for WFSU Eco Citizen was provided by Nature and the City of Tallahassee. Tune in to WFSU TV on April 29th, 30th, and May 1st for Nature American Spring Live at 8 p.m. 7 Central.